Okay, this is going to be our first uh, webinar lesson. It's on nutrition and dieting, and it is our first lecture, which is what are nutrients. Okay, what are the objectives for the lesson today? Um, define the terms nutrient and cal calorie um, for you to be able to describe the six main nutrient categories and to also explain the importance of each nutrient, talk about each nutrient, and to identify different foods or food groups where you can get these different nutrients from, okay? So what are nutrients? Um, so just like a car needs to have fuel in order for it to function or move or run, um, we have to have fuel as well. So a car uses gasoline for fuel. Well, what do we as humans use? We use nutrients. Where do we get nutrients? We get nutrients from food, okay? The definition for nutrient is, um, nutrients are chemical substances that the body needs to carry out bodily functions. And we actually have six main nutrient categories um, that we should be ingesting on a daily basis in order to have um, optimal performance. Our six main nutrient classes, all right, we have carbohydrates, we have fats, we have proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water, okay? Um, what does your body do with these nutrients? So as we ingest these nutrients, we get something from them. And what do we get? Um, from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, we get energy, all right? So when we ingest carbohydrates, fats, and proteins from the foods that we, that we eat, um, we take the energy that's stored in the chemical bonds and we break that down and we use that energy to run, to walk, for our heart to beat, um, for me to move my hands like this, okay? Um, the energy from food is measured in calories. I mean, you've heard about calories, you might see calories on a label. Um, what are calories? Well, calories are actually units of heat energy. So what we are getting from food is energy, okay? And it, again, it's measured in calories. So let's look at how scientists would define a calorie. So a scientist would define a calorie as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water, one degree Celsius. So calories are heat energy. How many calories are in, okay? So let's look at this slide here. So we have this double Whopper, okay, which I'm assuming would be finishing up here. So I think that's Burger King, right? All right. Um, you're going to see this uh, on most food packages. And if you go online, you can actually print out the um, menus and the uh, food label information for most restaurants. Um, so let's look here. So for this double Whopper, the serving size here is one serving. So one double Whopper has how many calories in it? 1,058 calories. So you might be thinking, mm, not so bad. Well, somebody your age should be consuming about, oh, 2,000 calories a day, depending on how active or inactive you are. Well, one double Whopper, that's not the french fries, that's not the extra large soda, or the supersized soda, or whatever it is, okay? That's one sandwich is, you know, over half of what you need to consume. So, hmm, um, that's a lot of energy that you're getting. And depending on how much you're moving around, are you burning that energy, okay? But we're going to look at food labels more um, in the future. But if you look at this food label, it talks about carbohydrates. It talks about proteins. It talks about fats, all right? These are three of our nutrient categories. And again, we're going to talk about food labels in the future. What can calories do? So again, calories are energy, just like uh, gasoline for a car, energy. What can we do with calories? So if we ingested five pounds of spaghetti, you would consume enough calories or get enough energy to brew a pot of coffee, okay? If you ate one piece of cherry cheesecake, which sounds delectable, uh, you could consume enough calories or energy to run a light bulb for an hour and a half. If you ate 217 Big Macs, ugh, you could drive a car, or you could consume enough energy that could power a car to drive 88 miles, okay? Um, and I kind of hinted to this a little before, but we're going to talk about how many calories you should eat on a daily basis later, okay? We have to consume a certain amount of calories because we need energy for our heart to beat, for our lungs to work, for um, all of our organs, for us to do, for us to sit here and breathe, we have to have calories. But when you consume a lot more than what you need on a daily basis, which is called your basal metabolic rate, um, that's when you start to gain weight and that can be negative. All right, so let's talk about what our first 
um, nutrient class, which is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the nutrients that come from plant materials, okay? They are the main source of energy for the body. So if, if, your, if your body had kind of a menu and, um, of different nutrient categories and which one it would like to choose, carbohydrates would be top on the menu for getting calories. Um, your body wants to consume carbohydrates. It wants to use them first as far as how it's going to process those calories and use them in your body, okay? One gram of carbohydrates is going to provide you with four calories of energy, okay? Carbohydrates cannot be stored in large amounts in the body, which is why they should make up a large part of your diet. I say use that with caution. If you consume an excess, an excess, an excess amount of carbohydrates, they're actually going to be converted to fat, and fat will be stored in your body. Carbohydrates are also called carbs. When people talk about carbs or carb counting, that's what they're talking about is carbohydrates. Also, another thing is that carbohydrates are also known as sugar. So people talk about how much sugar is in a food. They're actually talking about carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, um, when we bring them in our body, our liver deals with digesting them and breaking them down into ways in which we can use them, okay? Um, the liver really takes carbohydrates and either converts them into glucose or glycogen. Glucose, if we look down here in this chart, is a very simple carbohydrate molecule, okay? It hangs out in the blood and it gives the body instant energy. Glycogen is a large molecule. Glycogen is actually the storage molecule of carbohydrates in our body. So if we're consuming an excess amount of carbohydrates and our, our blood glucose level is where it's supposed to be, your liver is going to say, okay, I'm going to take this glucose and I'm going to store it as a glycogen and it's going to hang out in different areas of your body and different different body cells, okay? And then when you need to have that energy, maybe when your blood glucose level goes down, those glycogen stores are going to be broken down so that you can have glucose back in the bloodstream, okay? Um, where have you heard about glucose levels? I'll give you a second to think about. Who has to measure their glucose levels? When does glucose levels become, become important for somebody? When people have diabetes. So typically when people have diabetes, they actually have really high blood glucose levels. And that's because they do not have the proper amount of insulin in their body. And insulin is a hormone that comes from the pancreas. And what insulin does is that it causes your cells to be able to suck up glucose outside of the blood. Okay, and without insulin, or um, insulin not in, in, in enough quantities, then your sugar, your blood sugar, your blood glucose level goes skyrocketing and that can have bad effects on your body. Alright, types of carbohydrates. So you might have heard of simple versus complex carbohydrates. Which ones are better? Okay, so simple carbohydrates right here um, are one or two sugar molecules. So they're small molecules. They're very easily digested. They're quickly absorbed in the body. And some examples, some good examples, if you will, are fruits, vegetables, milk products, table sugar, honey. Okay, so glucose is actually a simple carbohydrate. Complex carbohydrates and they're also called starches, are long chains. So they're bigger molecules, um, sugar molecules, all right? So glycogen is a complex carbohydrate, okay? Um, to be able to digest and absorb complex carbohydrates, the body actually has to break them down first into simple carbohydrates, okay? So we actually have to burn a little bit of energy to get that energy. And so it provides us with a longer lasting energy, okay? Some examples of some complex carbohydrates are breads, pastas, rice, cereals, okay? Um, this is other category down here, which is fiber. Fiber is actually a type of complex carbohydrate, okay? It's not a separate category of its own. Um, it, it's not a nutrient because we do not get any calories from it, okay? But we we need it, okay? We, we we don't get any calories from it because we, we can't uh, digest fiber. We can't absorb it into our bodies. It, we ingest it into our digestive tract and it hangs out in our digestive tract. We need fiber because it actually helps us prepare solid waste and excrete it outside of our body, okay? So it helps us form poop, essentially, okay? Um, and people who are lacking fiber in their diet tend to be constipated, okay? And there can be some negative consequences for having the waste build up in your large intestine. So um, when people are constipating, constipated, what do they say? You need to have more fiber in your diet, okay? And right here are some examples of fiber, okay? Or dietary fiber. 
So fiber is a very good thing, and it is a complex carbohydrate. So again, it's going to provide you with longer lasting energy. That's not to say that all simple carbohydrates are bad, okay? If we look at this slide, these and these, okay, we've got our simple versus complex carbohydrates. The things listed here and the things listed here and here, well, they're going to provide you with more nutrients, okay? Candy, cake, other things with simple sugars are going to provide you with energy in the form of calories, but they lack, okay, vitamins, minerals, fiber. And if you remember, vitamins and minerals are part of that six um, nutrient categories that we have. Okay, cake, candy, that doesn't have anything like that. It has carbohydrates, it has calories, but it doesn't have good stuff versus the things here, the things here, okay? They have vitamins, they have minerals, and they have fiber, which are all healthy for you. All right, let's put carbohydrates to rest. Now let's talk about fats. Fats definitely get a bad rap. Fats are not all bad. We have to consume some fat in our diet, but it's the type of fat that we consume that makes a difference, okay? So, as I said, carbohydrates are on the body's number one choice for consuming calories. They want to use carbohydrates first. When we don't have carbohydrates readily available, the body will then go to fat, okay? Fats are sometimes called lipids. One gram of fat equals nine calories of energy. So that's over double what you get from carbohydrates you get from fat, okay? So when you consume fatty foods, they definitely make you feel fuller longer, okay? An interesting fact that people might not know is that every single one of our cells is partly made up of fat, okay? The plasma membrane of cells, if you remember back to science and biology, the plasma membrane of the cell, which is what makes the cell the inside to the outside, okay, it holds all the cellular stuff together, is actually made up of fat. So like I just said, every cell in the human body contains fat. When fat is not used, unlike carbohydrates, it is stored in the body, okay? Um, and fat does have some important roles, okay, believe it or not. So fat carries fat-soluble vitamins. We need to have these vitamins. They're essential for us, okay? Fat cushions and protects vital organs. So we have a layer of fat underneath our skin that um, both cushions and protects the organs underneath and helps insulate us from extreme cold, cold or extreme hot. Um, when you get an excess, an excess amount of fat, that's what things can be detrimental. There are two main types of fat, okay? We have saturated and unsaturated fats. So people have probably heard of that and want to know what that means. Saturated fats are fats that are solid at room temperature and they come from animal products butter, lard, beef, ice cream, okay? So again, saturated fats, they are solid at room temperature, and they are typically from animals. Unsaturated fats, they are liquids or oils at room temperature. So examples of that, olive oil, corn oil, soybean oil, okay? And they typically come from plant products. This other category down here are called trans fats, and you might have seen on different labels food product saying this is this product is trans fat free or zero trans fats per servings. Well what does that mean? Okay. A trans fat is a is is a fat that would typically be liquid at room temperature, but what manufacturers have done is they've actually chemically altered the substance by infusing it with hydrogen ions and they break chemical bonds and they cause this liquid substance to actually be solid at room temperature. And an example of this is margarine. Research has proven and they have found that trans fats are the link to heart disease. So that's why they tell you to stay away from margarine and when you look at different food labels, seeing it is, are there trans fats in this. Some types of fats, okay? Again, saturated fats, animal products, unsaturated fats, except for this fish down here, okay? Um, are plant products. What's kind of the difference between the two? Well, saturated fats are where you get cholesterol from. And cholesterol also has gotten a bad rap. What is cholesterol, okay? Cholesterol is a waxy fat substance, and every cell in your body actually produces cholesterol. Well, that sounds weird because we, you hear cholesterol and how bad it is, but our body actually produces it. The liver actually is a cholesterol manufacturer. The liver cells produce the most cholesterol out of any other cells in our body, okay? We get cholesterol from saturated fats. So we get cholesterol from those animal products, meat, eggs, fish, dairy, okay? 
Like I said, cholesterol is part of every one of our cells, okay? It has specific functions, and these are its absolutely vital functions. We have to have cholesterol. Cholesterol forms every single one of our cells, okay? In that plasma membrane, cholesterol is part of it, okay? The liver uses cholesterol to make bile. Bile is a substance that is almost like a detergent that causes you to break down fats when we ingest them. Cholesterol is the building block of hormones, of our sex hormones specifically, like testosterone, estrogen, and it also is a building block for vitamin D. We have to have vitamin D. If we did not have vitamin D, we would not absorb calcium. Calcium, you say. What does calcium make you think of? Bones, teeth, okay, muscles. We have to have calcium. So without this vitamin D here, we would not be able to absorb calcium. And then finally, it protects nerve cells. So the nerve cells are allowing you to do this. Nerves control everything within our body. Cholesterol actually is like a sweater that wraps around nerve cells and protects them from damage. They're very, very delicate cells. Our body makes cholesterol. Therefore, you should limit your dietary intake. Research has proven that the amount of cholesterol that you should ingest actually comes from the yolk of one egg. Your body makes all the cholesterol it needs. So, in essence, you do not have to consume any dietary cholesterol. If you do, however, you need to strictly monitor the amount of cholesterol that is in food and the amount of saturated or animal product facts that you're getting because that's what you're going to get that cholesterol from. So why does cholesterol get a bad rap, okay? Cholesterol travels in our blood, okay? And what can happen is that if you have a lot of cholesterol in your blood, if it's saturated with cholesterol, that cholesterol is going to fall out of solution. It's not going to be able to move around with the blood, and it's actually going to stick to the walls of your blood vessels. So if you have a blood vessel that's normally, you know, about this wide, and you have blood, which is a fluid going through it, and you have cholesterol that sticks on the edges here, well, what's going to happen to that blood vessel? It's going to get smaller. We have the same amount of blood that's trying to get through a smaller tube. What's going to happen to that pressure of that liquid? The pressure is going to go up. Well, what's the pressure inside us? It's our blood pressure. Blood pressure is going to go up. That is a negative thing. That can cause lots of other bad things going on in your body. Okay? So again, limit your cholesterol or saturated fat intake daily. Let's put fast to bed. Proteins. Proteins are an extremely important nutrient. Your body does not want to digest and use proteins for calories. Proteins have so many other jobs that you don't want to ingest that. So somebody who is severely anorexic, what's going to happen is that they're not consuming carbohydrates, they're not consuming fats. So what's going to happen? Proteins are going to be used. And proteins make up our bones. Proteins make up our muscles, our teeth, our hair, okay? So people who are really, really nutrient-deprived um, end up having very weak muscles, very weak bones, very dull hair. Why? Because their body is using proteins as a source of calories or energy, okay? Um, what do proteins do? Again, like I said, they build muscle, they build bones, organs, teeth, blood, okay? They form cell membranes, their enzymes, their hormones. Enzymes and hormones, you couldn't do anything without either of them, okay? Enzymes are responsible for all the different chemical reactions that go on in your body every day, and hormones are also regulating all the processes that are going on in your body. They are made from proteins. We have to have them. Um, one gram of protein does yield four, year, four calories of energy. However, like I said, your body does not want to digest proteins because they have so many other jobs within the body. But we do have to consume them so that they can be used to produce bones, produce muscles, produce organs, teeth, blood, etc. We don't have to consume a lot though, okay? Most Americans consume way more protein than they actually need. Well, proteins are kind of, they're not stored in the body, and what happens is that our kidneys are actually responsible for getting rid of the byproducts of protein breakdown. It's called um, urea. Um, if we have too much protein in our diet, so people who are ingesting like those protein shakes and things like that, it can actually cause damage to your kidneys. Um, you can get the amount of protein that you need just from, from eating things like broccoli, black beans, okay? What are proteins? So proteins are large molecules that are made up of the smaller chemical substances that are called amino acids. There are 22 amino acids that make up proteins. So if you want to think about it, it's like there are 20 letters to the alphabet. And the way that these letters come together, okay, or the way these amino acids come together, when we put different letters together, what do we get? We get words. Well, the way that the different amino acids come together, we get different proteins. 13 of our amino acids we can make in our body. But nine 
nine must be consumed. We have to eat them, okay? And these are called essential amino acids. So again, your body, when it, when it, when we get proteins, when we eat proteins, we digest those proteins down, okay, into amino acids. And then what our body does is it puts those amino acids together. It makes new words or it makes new proteins for the ones that we actually need. So we have two different classes of proteins. We have complete and we have incomplete proteins. Complete proteins contain nine, all nine essential amino acids. Where are they found? They're found in animal products, okay? Incomplete proteins, they do not contain all nine essential amino acids. They're found in plant products like rice, barley, legumes. Legume is just any plant that produces a seed, okay? So looking at this too, the difference between the essential or complete and incomplete proteins, okay? What type of diet do you think would cause people to potentially have a deficit or not receive the nine essential amino acids? I'll let you think about it for a second. So again, what kind of diet could lead to a deficit in essential amino acids? Well, if you were thinking strict vegetarian or vegan, so people who do not eat meat or vegans who do not consume any animal products, they could potentially be lacking in the nine essential amino acids that we absolutely have to consume, okay? So they will have to be very conscious about potentially taking supplements or what other types of non-animal foods or non-meat foods that they could get um, in different combinations so that they could get all of these essential amino acids because we have to have them. All right. Vitamins and minerals. So vitamin minerals are essential chem chemical substances that the body needs to perform vital functions. They're essential, but we do not get any calories for them, okay? But we have to have them. You're, we couldn't live without vitamins and minerals. But again, no calories, no energy comes from vitamin and minerals. We need them for different processes in our body. So let's talk about vitamins first. We have two different classes of vitamins. We have fat-soluble vitamins, and we have water-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins come from animal products. They can be stored in the body. A, D, E, K. Vitamin K is actually made in our body by E. coli that lives in our large intestine, okay? Water-soluble vitamins, come, they come from plant products. We cannot store them if we consume water-soluble vitamins in an excess amount, like in a pill, we just pee it out, okay? Um, water-soluble vitamins are the B vitamins, um, biotin, folic acid, and vitamin C. We have to have vitamins in order to do different functions or different processes in our body. Minerals, okay? Here are some examples of some essential minerals that we have to consume, okay? Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, chloride. These are all minerals, okay? Um, this tells you here the function. This is the job that they have in the body. And I'll, you know, you have these in your notes and you can read them if you want to. These are the best sources from where you can get them, okay? This, this deficiency symptoms, this is what happens if you do not have or don't consume the proper amount of minerals, okay? Calcium, I'll tell you right now. Calcium is something we have to have in order to have strong teeth, muscles, bones, okay? If you are not consuming the right amount of calcium, what's going to happen is that your bones are actually a reservoir of calcium. So when your blood doesn't have enough calcium in it, well, where does it get it from? It gets it from your bones. And when we take away calcium from our bones, they get weaker and weaker and weaker. And what can result? This thing called osteoporosis that you probably have heard of. Another mineral called iron, which is on this chart, but iron is actually stored in our body, and it's our red blood cells are made up of, of iron, okay? Iron and red blood cells carry oxygen, all right? So when people have an iron deficiency, it's called anemia. So think about people who are anemic or have anemia. Are they jumping up and down and, you know, able to run marathons? Probably not. They're usually very tired. Um, they have a pale complexion. It's because they're not carrying around the right amount of oxygen, okay? Um, they may have to adjust their diet so that they're consuming the right amount of iron. Water, okay? Just like vitamins and minerals, we have to have water. Water is actually the most important nutrient. So of all the other five that we talked about, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, water is number one, all right? It is the most important nutrient. Even though we don't receive any energy or nutrients from it, we have to have it. 70% of us is made up of water. Water is essential for life, okay? 
something you should know, or you may already know, okay, you can go for about a month without eating any food. You have those stores within your body cells, but you can only go a few days without water and you will die. All right, what are some roles of water and where do we find water in our body, okay? Our blood and tissue fluid is made up of water, okay? And water has three main functions within the body. It carries nutrients and waste, okay? And also blood carries oxygen and gets rid of carbon dioxide waste. But we have to have oxygen to survive. We cannot live without oxygen. It helps maintain proper temperature. So it takes a lot of energy for water to change um, change temperature, okay? And with us, the that nature of water helps us when we go outside and it's 20 below zero, we don't automatically go from 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit to 30 below zero Fahrenheit, okay? Also, all of our chemical reactions in our body occur within water, okay? So that's pretty important as well. You should have six to eight glasses, eight ounce glasses of water a day, so eight times eight, about 64 ounces of water a day you should consume. When you lose water or you're not consuming water and you don't have enough of it in your body, it can lead to dehydration. And dehydration may not sound bad, but in a very young person or a very old person or if somebody's really chronically dehydrated, meaning it happens a long time for an extended period of time, somebody can actually die, okay? Because this, this, and this can be significantly affected because you don't have enough water. All right, so that concludes our first slideshow. What I want you to take away from this, we have nutrients, okay? What do we get from the nutrients? We get energy, okay? From that energy, what do we get? We get calories. We have six uh, nutrient classes, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, water, okay? There is a quiz on Moodle and you can take that. Um, hopefully you're able to see this and you enjoyed this and look for